So now let's have a look at that um, H5P OER hub that is around and kind of is not around. Um, it is kind of, I don't know how to call that state, inofficially released. So the H5P core team has released it um, uh, and you can can actually use it on, uh, on Drupal 7 and on Moodle for now. Um, not on WordPress yet and uh, not on Drupal 8 and I'm not sure if it will ever come for Drupal 8 because Drupal 8 I think it will die in two weeks then it will reach its end of life so I'm not sure if it will be ported to Drupal 8 um, yeah and Drupal 9 is a whole different story but let's have a look at that HFE OER hub and how you can use it or maybe let's have a look at it first what it is so um, uh, let's go to my test car. So this is like, it is a regular Moodle 3.11. And so it has both. It's important to say, um, let's go to my course and I can show what I mean. So this is my course. Um, we don't need that SCORM package here. So let's delete it. Um, if I want to add an activity resource, that's how you would add H5P. You will see that I have both that blue h5p symbol and that black h5p symbol and that blue h5p symbol is the h5p core integration that moodle created and uh, that black icon comes from the h5p plugin for moodle that the h5p team created um the h5p oer hub is not available for the core integration yet i don't know they um i think they're still deciding if they wanted to include in their version or not. I don't know. Um, they would have to tell you, but I can show it uh, to you if I use, or if you use the um, H5P plugin for, for Moodle, that black, using the like, black symbol. So um, if I click on in, uh, include content, then you will see, you, you will see the regular H5P, I think it's called content type hub, uh, where you can uh, create content or upload content. And up here you will see, I, I now have three, um, options so I can create content or I could upload content down over here um, or I can say okay um, no I don't want to start from scratch I want to see if there's something that I can reuse from somebody else so that is where the H5P OER hub comes into play so if I click on get share content then you'll see um, it opens a different window it looks kind of similar, but it serves a different purpose. So now uh, I'm not choosing from content types, but from actually from existing content that people have shared on the global OER hub. So um, you can see you have all kinds of options now. So if you look for content, you can filter by disciplines and you get like tons of options for disciplines. I think this is like a standard, um, what would you call it? Um, there, there are some, some, some there's kind of a standard how to list disciplines and uh, it's all here. It has sub disciplines and sub sub disciplines. And uh, I think like 300 disciplines, I'm not completely sure, but around that. Uh, you could, so you could filter for content types. So maybe you're only interested in, um, I don't know, in interactive videos, then you could filter for interactive videos. You can filter by license. Um, here it helps you a little bit. Um, so it can be modified and allows commercial use, but well, in behind is what people have entered into the um, the metadata. Um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it has entered what what they have entered into the metadata of content. Could so it's mostly uh, Creative Commons licenses that you will find there. You could filter by language. You could filter by level. And uh, level is something that the author has defined in three um, well in three levels, like beginner, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And reviewed is something special. I'm not completely sure how that review process works, but for now, at the beginning at least, so whenever you, when somebody shares content on that HV OHUB, there's actually a person who um, who views it first and says, okay, this is not some, I don't know, um, I don't know, violate, obviously violating copyrights or something like that because somebody uploaded the latest uh, movie um, in an interactive video, for example. So that is... You, you can, but you can choose to get every everything. So um, just for, for demo purposes, let's, let's say I have a chess course. Um, I might, might, not, might not be the best example, but let's say I have a chess course and I'm looking for chess content. So I would enter chess and search for chess. And uh, interesting, I find something in German, it's called Zuordnungsaufgabe by some guy, uh, 
who bears my name. So <laughs> um, let's say, okay, Schach is, is chess in German. So let's have a look at that. Maybe I, I could use it. So um, if you click on that, it's also it's similar to the um, normal HFP hub where you now inf get information about the content type that you were about to create. And here you'll see all kinds of information about the um, the content that I see. So uh, what do I see? Of course, everything uh, we, we could filter for. Here's my name. Uh, not everything we could filter for, but here's my name. Uh, drag and drop is the content type. That uh, might be okay. Language is German. Mm, for my purposes, might be okay. And uh, not for yours, maybe. But of course, that's the beauty. So you could download it and just translate it and you're done. So you don't have to create the whole... Um, the whole exercise from scratch. So you could still use something that is in, in German and not in English, for example. Uh, yeah, this one is discipline. And I wasn't sure why to put chess. So um, there wasn't that nothing um, like game or something. So I, I <laughs> used gaming law, which of course isn't exact, but you could use, maybe you could even use it in gaming law. Entertainment is probably the, the best discipline. Um, I set the level to beginner and you will see the size of that content. So obviously, um, there's some image or something in there because it's kind of huge. Um, yeah, typical age, you can set that as well. So I said, okay, if you're four years old or older, you could, could use it, but I'm just guessing here. So, okay, let's say, yeah, that looks promising. And I can see some small images here and we can click on that and we can see some static images. So in English, this would be like, 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 a, like a tiny uh, chess exercise. Um, and position all the, the pieces, the chess pieces on the chessboard in their normal starting position. So, okay, but I, I can't test that here's just a static image. Uh, but you can also have a, a look at that content type. So you can click on preview and it will open a new page. And actually, now I have uh, the, the normal content and I could, um, yeah, position my chess pieces. So obviously, this is drag and drop. And if you can see, you have 64. Uh, drag zone. So this would be kind of tedious to recreate yourself. So um, might be good to reuse it. And yeah, let's just put one correct and one wrong. So let's say that is my starting position and I can check it. Überprüfen means check and well, okay. Zero out of 32 uh, possible scores. So the, I know this is not the, the, perfect, um, uh, the perfect chess exercise because yeah, maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, but you could, could decide to reuse it. So if you now close the preview, you're back here. And now you can decide to get the content. So down here, there's that orange button. And if I click that, oh, you have um, more information but down here, by the way. You have all the licensing information. And I'll license it as CC0 because that is a perfect license if you want to license something. And some publisher info, which is about me. And I just entered my name, obviously. So I could now decide to get the content, so now it's downloading. And um, as you see, I have it in the editor directly. So this is like the, um, the drag and drop content type as you would, as you know it. Here's a task, I can kind of have a look at that. So uh, there are my pieces, there are my, dro dro my drop zones, but I don't have to create them. I just could download that from the HFV OER hub. And I could set all that stuff here, and but I could also simply save and display and uh, well here it is so um, that's the exercise and it's now running in in my Moodle course so that is um, one half of the HP OER app so um, which is pretty nice because um, if people are generous and share their content then you can can reuse that um, yeah so now I need two more things so let's say you can see I now here I have now uh, um, have a button here which now sh says share on H5P Hub. So obviously there is a way to export it to the H5P OER Hub as well. And if you want to do that, so if you want or if you want to use the H5P OER Hub at all, um, then um, you have to activate that in the plugin first. So it works on Drupal 7, as I said before. So um, and it works on uh, the Moodle plugin for it, uh, the H5P plugin for Moodle. So um, all you need to do is go to um, here in Moodle, it's site administration, and then you go to the plugins, and then you choose the H5P plugin settings down here. And uh, kind of similar in, on Drupal 7, it would be in modules, uh, H5P configuration, something, and then you have basically the same page that I open here. 
And at the bottom, you will see, of course, that I have already activated it. Um, but you, you will see um, everything but my, my name and my email address. Um, and you can, the same, the other one is the same. So it says change account settings here. And I don't think here is a good link description, but um, if you click that, this screen will open. And of course, because I have registered already, it's pre-filled, but uh, you can enter your name. Um, as it should be shared with the content. Uh, uh, good to, important to remember, this one will be shared with every content. So if you install that on Moodle and um, maybe you're just a teacher, you're not the administrator. So, um, then not your name will be in the publisher name, but the publisher will, will then be, might, might be a school, for example, um, and not an individual person. So, but that is a publisher. Uh, you have to enter an email address, of course, kind of, and you can, can add more information if you want to, like who you are and what you do. And you have to leave um, the contact information. I, obviously, you don't have to, to fill, fill that out, but uh, you could. Um, yeah, and you can add a logo if you want to. I didn't do that. And then you have to check that button and then you save account settings and then you're done. So th th the process would be the same. I'll click on cancel. And uh, yeah, then now you could could get content, but of course also share content. And we can have a look at that as well. So let us go back um, to my Moodle course, my test course. And maybe let's create a uh, new content quickly. So um, yeah, let's add a new, new H5P content. Again, if you go to, um, well, maybe I can show you at least. So this would be like creating uh, H5P in the Moodle core integration. And you see, um, yeah, I, I guess you would get it from the, uh, the, the content bank and that content bank doesn't up it just, um, yeah, well, the, the content bank would be like this. Oh, I have test content here. This is great. So, and, uh, you know, there's no, this H5P hub isn't here. So that is why that H5P OER hub isn't there as well. So you just have that, that list of, um, content types to choose from. So it will not not work um, yet. I don't know if it will come um, with the um, Moodle core version, but if I go back and now I choose that black icon over here, which is the um, well, the kind of the regular HF integration with plugin, then uh, we can choose to create a new content type. And I think true false is the quickliest, I guess. So let's let's create a cool H5P true false question. So first of all, of course, I have to give it a title. Let's say test true false. And now because I want to share it, it's important um, that you fill out that metadata. Probably you, you don't do that very often. I don't know uh, because it's tedious and maybe you don't need it. But if you want to share the content, you should really uh, fill that out. Otherwise, you'll have to fill it out later. So. Um, you can do it can do it now so uh, because everything i share usually is cc0 license i'll choose the cc0 license and let's just say i want to enter 2021 and i'm not admin user that's my just my uh, name on the test instance of moodle but let's give it my real name that is now not the publisher name again this is now the author name so i'm the creator of that content and the author, author i don't want to at uh, anything else so it's fine source i'll leave that out but uh, fill it out if you want to so you save the metadata now i've done that and of course um you could uh choose to add media and add metadata there as well and uh, the whole nine yards and uh, then i have to add some questions so is the edge 5 p oer hub cool and i think the only correct answer is true Oh no, I don't have to, I have to do a statement. Uh, let's just say the HVAP OER hub is cool. So this I think is definitely true. So let's say this is a perfect, the perfect content, uh, uh, well, the perfect content ever. The most perfect, no, it doesn't make sense. I'm just babbling, sorry. So um, now I've created my content. Now I can uh, decide to share that content on the H5P OER hub. So um, you see it here on um, on Drupal. It is integrated in the, uh, I think the menu is up on the right. Yeah, it should be there. So like um, edit and open and, um, and 
in share and here in Moodle it is over here. So share on HRV Hub. And if you click on that, you will see that is what I meant. You have to enter the license information anyway for the content. So, but it's pre-filled now. So I see my title. Um, I now have to set the, the language, which is English, which is fine. And it fetches that from the HRV content. Actually, if you change the, the language there, then um, it will be uh, uh, filled out already. And you see CC0 because I chose that. So that is required info. All you have to enter um, and you, you could, that could be all, but you can add some more information if you click on optional info. So now is all the things that, that help other people to find your content because the title might not be enough. So um, I could choose um, a discipline and I don't know, architecture. I'll just choose something random. So, so let's say this is architectural engineering. Why not? Um, I click on add and you can, can add more. You can um, add as many as you want to. Uh, I'll stick with one. Then you have to choose the age range. So um, uh, how old should people be that uh, complete that? And I think, well, let's just say 10. Uh, you can decide to add a level. Let's say this is intermediate because you have to know HREF, the HREF OER first. You can add keywords, which um, uh, probably are very useful. I'll just add test. And uh, now you can enter, you, you've seen that before. I have that uh, screenshots. So I could now add up to five screenshots over here. Um, I don't have one prepared, unfortunately. And you can also add that icon that was the, um, uh, what's it called in English? Um, what is that, uh, that piece, that, that horse? It's not called horse. What is the chess piece called in, in English? I don't know. Uh, you know what I mean? That symbol that you saw. It can upload an icon. And of course you can add it like, description that pe can help people to uh, decide if that's useful um, like a short description and a long description and then you can review all your information so that is what i've entered and if i think okay um, this is fine and i'll click on share and uh well that's that's it that content is now submitted to the hrfe oer hub and as you can see it, it reads your content will normally be available in the hub within one business day because for now, somebody uh, is checking it. I don't know if that process will stay the same, but uh, yeah, then you're done and you can, can close that window. And um, I guess, uh, yeah, 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 that error message, I, I asked about that. It, um, it issues that error message because I'm on a local uh, system and not on the web. So uh, the HFE server can connect to my server and that's how it is. Um, and you can now see, you can, of course, you have uh, other options, no, not of course, but you have other options. So for example, like let's say um, later on you decide, okay, I forgot to add a description, but I want to add it now. And then you click on edit sharing info. So then we'll go back here and you can change everything. Let's click on cancel. Yep, I want to cancel. And of course, if, if, if no, not of course, but if you change things later on, let's say I have made a, ma a mistake in my um, in my exercise and I want to um, yeah, re-upload that to the hub and I can, I can just edit that locally and then click on sync changes that, that won't be done automatically, at least for now. So let's say I've changed something and I would click on sync changes and then now it would, would sync um, the changes. So now it would be updated on the um, H5P OER hub. Uh, not for the people actually. So if people have reused that content already, that won't change on their systems, of course. Um, um, they would have to, to sync it again, so they could also um, get a new version, but it won't sync automatically. And let's say, okay, now I've really done a big mistake, so maybe the HRV OER hub isn't cool at all, and I don't want to have that exercise, and I can click on unshare, and uh, now it is removed from the HRV OER hub, not from the, from the platforms of other people that already used that content, but from the HRV OER hub. Um, yeah, so essentially that is all you can do for now with the HRP OER. I think it's pretty cool, but it will, I, I have talked to the HRP core team and they have told me that before it is officially released, I don't know what, what's uh, missing. I think um, they want to have like more content on there first so people actually find something, um, which is, I think, kind of contradictory because if nobody uses it, so how could content get on there? But 
yeah, that's the way it is. So before it is officially released with a big bang, um, I know the search um, options should be improved because f you, currently you cannot search for authors. So for example, like if, if there was an H5P legend uh, who created great H5P content, you wanted to search for content from that person, you couldn't because the author information is not in that index yet, but it will get in there. And also two, uh, two other things. So first of all, there will be a dashboard. So if you share content, then you will be able to see how many people use it. So uh, maybe even from which region in the world, I don't know, but um, uh, you can actually see that people reuse your content. So this is kind of nice. And the other thing that will be possible is, is that, um, let's say I upload a course presentation to the HFP hub. And that course presentation probably has lots of sub content like individual exercises. Um, and it will be possible to also search automatically search for that sub content. So um, like, let's say I've like have built it like kind of a chess course inside the course presentation with 20 different exercises for chess. And uh, if I now search, if I then search for chess, then I wouldn't only get that course presentation, but maybe like the drag and drop interaction as well. And uh, I don't know, some true false questions, some multiple choice questions, whatever is in that content type. So I could, um, I don't have to, to re to upload everything individually, but HPP would uh, take care of that itself. So it, um, sub content would be searchable and reusable um, directly. And, and um, yeah, that will also come to the HRP OER app. But I guess that is it. And um, why don't you play with it? <laughs>